Today we got some more geography now. We got Greece this time. When I think of Greece, I think of beautiful holidays. I think of beautiful food. Let's see what this video has got for us, man. Mm. Of you're course, the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, 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 you're the oh, one I Greece like it. What a reference, right? You get it? I'm so clever, right? Do you get my reference? <laughs> It's time to learn geography. This is gonna make me want to go on a holiday. Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. Yep. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Uh. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Yeah, let's find out how it all went down. You know what? When you like, when you actually think about it, there's a lot going on with Greece, right? I, I, like the Greek gods, right? D that's Greece, unless I'm absolutely tripping balls, but the Greek gods, so you got beautiful food, Greece beautiful country, the holidays. Part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas, bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Now, despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into crazy. geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused, with this place that we already talked about Thessaly, uh. Pyrus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000 uh. islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros or Kanachale and Tenedos or Botsjada. Now keep in mind the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island it's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth which has a huge canal. Wait is that my main After river? Independence from the Ottoman times Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to oh. some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delivery. Yeah like Greece is actually so beautiful like when you think about Greece you think white buildings white hotels Beautiful, like, see, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I want to go. Waters, I want to go. Airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula is called Halkidiki, and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos, or Holy is that it? Eh? Is interesting because oh it's an my, monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted. You have to have a special permit, and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. What? Some women have either accidentally or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest <laughs> cities are, of course, Athens, the capital, what does she want of to and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each and Inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Cool. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Yep, yep, yep. This is where I went on holiday. Rhodes, oh my god. Like it honestly, I don't think I've ever been to a better place. I is my literally number one holiday destination. Rhodes once held the Colossus. I want to go. Again. Wonders of the ancient world. Sick. Once tried to become its own country. I never do that. Time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its oh. ridiculously picturesque cliffside oh. white marble villas, and Patmos, the incredibly significant That's religious cool. site in which Jesus's disciple John was exiled and wrote the Book of Revelation. Speaking of which, Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world. Only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites. Now we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot, like France more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now wait, wait, like France what? Go in terms of overall sites. Now, we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot. Like right. France, more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now, we all know Oh about shit. Wait. Okay, that makes sense for Greece, but I I never knew that about France. More than the whole population of France visit France every year. Really? Really?
Uh, interesting. Interesting. And the Parthenon, it makes sense for Greece because everyone goes to Greece. Menorah, Pillar, Cliff, Monasteries, Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of cool. Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the That's Chios, it. former leper colony buildings, the Palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, there's a lot of nice places in Greece, like history places. Now, there's an old Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. <laughs> I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit. Don't quote me on it. Too late. It's a quote now. <laughs> Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. Right. Wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting job. I can't job. believe you've been so much money love than his people. On the West, on the West Bank. Bank. I don't care what the West the Bank. West Talk about me. Talk about the First of all, the country is about 80% mountainous on both the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rhodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Now yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, Greece is just so fucking cool, man. Like, it, I, when you actually think about it, it actually is so now, fucking cool. With the exception cool. of small boats and canoes, Ooh. almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus Range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south-central Greece. Region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Pop bro, 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 when I went to Greece, oh, Oh my, oh my, oh my, I want the food, bro. It's, like Lusaka, it's so Kopra, good. Classic Greek salad, pita with gyros. It's so time, good. That cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street which <laughs> is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service yeah. jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like the Vikos Gorge. Oh my Sami God. In oh my God. The Siri E. Culture Blue Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and so much more. Yeah, there's in a nutshell, loads. Greece is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. <laughs> well, on to the next. <laughs> Oh, what a book holiday now. Winston Churchill once said, Greeks don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. Okay. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country at about 93% are made up of ethnic Greeks and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They uh. use the Type-C and F plug outlets. They use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro, they used the Drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world. And they drive on the- It looks cool, those coins, huh? Anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail, but in the quickest way, I can put this. Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city states God. fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. <laughs> Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, yes, he, he was, was. Never Greek. How many times? Then there was classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so it's widespread awesome. that today almost every language in Europe invokes some some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently Holy spoken shit. written language in the world. And eh, the Shang Dynasty. Eh, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, no clothing. mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you know what? This know that yeah, I'm surprised this episode is 13 minutes long.
This episode legit could be like the longest episode on Geography Now. Most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geography peeps, or as I like to call you, Geogra Greeks, have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, cool. but nonetheless not far off. Big Never families seen with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka, Everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful, warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, in Greece, voting is required by law, as is conscription for men ages 16. Yeah, that's right, 16. They get them while they're young. Up to 45 shit. for a minimum of nine months in service. Many people celebrate name day instead of- Wait, is that another country? Is, is Greece another country where you have to serve some- uh, Is that what you said? For men ages 16. Yeah. How was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, in Greece, voting is required by law as right. is conscription for men ages 16. Yeah, that's right, 16. They get them while they're young. Up to 45 for a minimum of nine months in service. Many people yeah, I, I think what he's saying is they have to serve nine months in, in, in the military, which is, I, I actually think is really smart. I've said this in uh, another geography now. I can't remember which country it was. But um, yeah, so it, it, it's really smart to have some sort of military training. It, like just six, six nine months. Because like, I was saying, like, let's say, like, with the current events, let's say World War happened to, uh, you know, happen, and I was drafted. I don't even know how to use a gun, bro. I, like, I, I have no minute, you know what I mean? Like, I, I have no knowledge, no anything. So I'll be screwed. So I, I feel like when you're young, six months, nine months, obviously you get pay, uh, paid for it, etc. So it's like a part-time job, but you know what I mean? Um, And yeah, you just do a little bit of training. So if, uh, got, uh, you know... If the day does happen to come, you are prepared. It's name smart. Day it's smart. Birthdays in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save space, oh. many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes are incredibly oh. rare as most oh. people live five years the patron saint that they got their name from land is kind of limited so to save space many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary retirement all right that that makes sense as well but that's what the, yeah imagine working there with that many schools oh homes are incredibly rare as most greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes traditional music can be found everywhere you'll probably hear a lot of lutes mandolins and tambourines traditional dances are alive and well they all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions oh and old guys smoking while playing backgammon there's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon avoid the <laughs> offensive mutsa hands and just like we studied in the estonia episode greece has an influx of women like a lot somewhere around 66 oh my god the population is female this may or may not be the reason what? Greece is also the world's most how can i put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children viewers um uh, greece is the most hey hey active country in the world they even beat brazil Brazil. Oh shit. Enough, yeah. Greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, back in 2001, Greece. Yeah, um, th this is a few years old, and I remember it being on the news the about EU. the Long Greece issue. Short, they misrepresented their financial statements, they entered an IMF and ECB memorandum, and now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible responsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts you know, i don't know how it is now though back in my day yeah back in your day you ruined my day greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the eu as well with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs nonetheless oh, wow. as depressing as that sounds greece actually interestingly enough has the lowest suicide rate in the eu now before we move on here are some rapid fire notable contributions greece has made to the world inventions like the water mill alarm clocks lighthouses the crane construction levers catapults a crude steam engine central heating and technically the <laughs> what, 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 what? like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would probably include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. Alexander no, the Great. No, no, yes, yes, no. Yes, I'm going to say he is, he is Greek. Greek. Yes, he is. He is. 
modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Rose, uh, Yanni, and soccer Justin. players, Giorgio Samaras, Giorgios Karayunas, Konstantinos Mitroglu, this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia, what? and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. Bro, how are you running a thousand miles in 11? Oh Greece my god. Is really old. Like, whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell, though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those right. Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be Orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although right. each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan, South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no-no. When it comes to their best friend though, almost every Geogra Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents. And yeah, yeah, it, Cyprus is completely different to Greece, right? But he, he just said he is like an extension of Greece. I've always thought there was like, I thought Cyprus was Greece. Like, like it's just a city in Greece or some, some sort of attachment to Greece. Do I've always thought in that. In conclusion, modern day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is today, you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. And by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned, Grenada is coming up next. Really cool, really cool video, really interesting. Greece is a beautiful place. Hope you guys enjoy it as well. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.